Hello, welcome to part 4. So, uh, we are getting very closer to our final goal of data logging using the TX700. But firstly, to get uh, before you can start data lo logging, you need, need to get accurate the information of what is the time now. Okay. So, for this fourth video, we'll be learning how to get the real-time clock data from the PLC itself. Okay. So, firstly, what do you need to do? Okay, uh, we're going to create a program to help us uh, do the collection of the time data. Okay, so over here, I'm going to call it RTC program. Okay, and then in the RTC program, I'm going to add a few code over here. Okay, so magically added some code. So uh, what this program will do is actually it will collect data from a, uh, our time function and then store it and export it into a uh, word data, okay? And, but of course you cannot read the UTC, uh, the actual timestamp word data because it represents uh, it represent the number of seconds that pass between now to uh, <laughs> from uh, from 1970s until all the way until now so it's a very very large number okay but you don't need to know uh, because uh, luckily there are extra functions that converts this word data into readable string data okay so just follow this is what's happening in the following code over here and once you get the data I'm outputting it out from the program itself okay so now what I like to do is also to create uh, to run this program as a separate task every one second so this is my RTC task so and from the task I can add the program that I want to run and I want to run this uh, uh, real time code every one second okay uh, so the good reason eh, the main reason why I like to separate my code eh? okay so the main reason why I like to separate my code into a separate task is because the time uh, what's it called? the time retrieval function is not very essential and it might crowd out the more uh, essential real-time tasks on the PLC and secondly is also a uh, processor uh, intensive every time you take the um, real-time reading it, it also it actually takes a significant amount of millisecond before it completes okay so it, yeah but this might differ uh, across across different hardware but to be safe just do it in a separate task mainly so now you see this red line because this uh, function does not exist okay so this function actually belongs to a library that was written by uh, codices so and we just need to add it into the library so just add the library advance search for sys time rtc <laughs> ah okay okay simply add this library into the configuration and you'll see that the uh, error disappears okay if you are curious about what's happening what's the function over here you can also highlight the library and go in and read more data on what is the uh, output of this functions okay so now oh and in order to visualize this function over here in my main program I simply just need to call the name of the program itself dot and the output okay yes the time okay and just for
uh, cur uh, just for you, right? I'm gonna let you see what does the actual word data looks like. Okay, so I'm gonna log in. Okay, fingers crossed, no errors. Okay, run. Ta da ta ta ta. Ah, okay. So you can see that this is my data. It's in string format DT207. And then after that, the second one is actually a very big, large word data that changes every second. Okay. Ah, so this is an example. So sometimes you might want to use this for a very unique and easily processable timestamp, but uh, this is more readable. Okay. <laughs> so now with this, we can proceed on to part five, where we uh, record the data in the CSV file. Bye.